Okay, here we're going to look at a hedge against the fixed notes payable using an interest rate swap. So what's involved here? Corp A here issues a notes payable, Bank B buys this notes payable. Now Corp A is going to pay a fixed interest rate on this notes payable and in our case it's going to be for ten million dollars here this notes payable. And at the same time Corp A here buys a interest rate swap and Bank A sells the swap to Corp A here. Now Corporation A here is going to pay a variable rate on this uh, interest swap here and it's going to be for ten million dollars the same amount as for our notes payable. And while they pay the variable rate they're going to receive a fixed interest rate here on this swap from um, Bank A. And Corp A here is uh, buying this swap betting that the interest rate is going to decrease and that's going to reduce the total interest expense here on this transaction. Now looking over at our um, notes payable here, uh, the fair value of this liability of this notes payable is going to change if the benchmark LIBOR interest rates change. Now uh, the cash flows are fixed but the discount or the current interest rate results in a change here in the present value of these cash flows. Okay, now we have to determine the swap's fair value. And for example, here we have semi-annual interest payments. The start date is 1-1, and then the contract is settled on 630 of X2 the next year. So the swap's fair value here, that's based on the present value of the change in interest rates between periods times the $10 million in this example for whatever time is remaining from the uh, uh, period here that we're looking at until the contract is settled. So looking at our 630 period here we had a 7% uh, uh, percent interest rate on 1-1 one, one, and then it was 6.8% on 630 so take the difference of that, of that those two rates times the 10 million dollars uh, for the uh, 12 months that's remaining here 630 until this contract is settled on 630 of the next year here and that present value here it would uh, be eighteen thousand seven hundred and six dollars. Looking at the next period here, uh, twelve thirty-one. Again, we just take the difference here between our interest rates of six point eight minus six point seven times the ten million dollars, and then there are six months remaining in this contract here from twelve thirty-one to six thirty, and then its present value here is ninety-six hundred and seventy-five dollars. And then we have to determine the change in fair value between periods here. So for the first period here at the start date, there is no value, a fair value on this contract here. It's zero. Then looking at our next period here of June 30th, uh, we would take the $18,706 here and compare it with the uh, zero amount here on 1-1. One, one, and then the change in fair value is $18,706. Then looking at our 1231 period here, uh, the change in fair value would be the 18706 here minus the $9,675. And then we have a change in fair value here of $9,031. So it, it went down here by $9,031. Okay, now looking at our notes payable, we have to revalue our notes payable or adjust it for the change here in interest rates as well. Now I'm going to go under the assumption here that our notes payable fair value equals the swaps fair value. And the notes payable fair value would be based on the present value of the uh, notes payable interest payment plus the notes payable principal amount for that period. Now to record this interest rate swap on our balance sheet and on our income statement. On the balance sheet we'd have set up here our notes payable as a liabilities account here and then on the asset side we'd have our swap contract and also our cash transactions. And then over on our income statement or as part of our net income we'd have an account here for any gain or loss on the swap and then also an account for any gain or loss on the notes payable and then we have also our interest expense that we recognized here. Okay, first looking at our swaps contract. This is where we record the change in fair value of the swaps contract. So starting out with our first period here of June 30th or 630, we had an increase here in 18th 
$12,706 here in this contract. And then for the next periods that we had a reduction here in the change in value. So at the end of the period here, it was written down to a zero value for the contract here, where we started out with an $18,706 increase in the contract. And then at the end of the contract, it had an $18,706 reduction here. And then over on our uh, income side here, uh, we would record a gain or loss on this uh, swaps contract. So it had an initial gain here of $18,706, and then it was reduced here by the change in value of that swaps contract. So at the end of the period here, the uh, increase here was reduced here by the reduction here to, the, to a zero value here at the end of the uh, contract. Okay, looking at our notes payable, we would increase it here uh, when we took out this note here for $10 million, and then we'd also increase our cash account for that amount. And then uh, during the life here of this contract, we would look for, the, we would record the change here in value of this note's payable. And the change in value of this note's payable balances with the change in value here for the swap. And then at the end of the contract, we would pay off this notes payable. We'd reduce our notes payable here by $10 million. And then we'd credit or reduce our cash by that $10 million. And then we'd also have to recognize any gain or loss over here on the notes payable. So we started out here with a loss of $18,706. And then we uh, recognized here a gain on this notes payable for these uh, during the period of this contract until we recognize here a total gain. Our to Total gain and loss here was offset on our notes payable for the uh, contract here. And that also is offset at here, offset with any gain or loss here on the on our swaps contract. So if we had, uh, in this case, we had a gain here in our notes payable of $18,706. And then we had a offsetting amount here of a loss on the swap contract of $18,706. Okay, looking at our interest expense, this is what these swaps contracts are all about. So looking at our notes payable, we've been paying that 7% fixed uh, rate of interest times a $10 million note, and that would be for three semi-annual payments here of $350,000 each. And then uh, on our swaps contract, we'd be paying the uh, difference between the fixed rate of interest and the variable rate of interest. So in that case, we actually had a reduction here in our interest expense for this uh, 1231 period of $10,000. And then for the 630 period of the closing here at the end of the contract for $15,000. So we had a total reduction here in our interest expense uh, by $25,000 for this, by taking out this swaps contract. Now, this interest expense here was, we had a, a balancing or an offsetting amount here for our gain or loss on our notes payable and our gain or loss here on our swaps contract. So this is what we'd be, our reduction here for our expense on this contract would have been a total here of $25,000 since we didn't have any gain or loss here to recognize on either our notes payable or our swaps contract. Now remember here, uh, this interest expense also affects our cash account here. So an increase in interest expense would reduce our cash account. And then for the reduction here on interest expense, we'd actually be receiving uh, cash from our uh, on that swaps contract. Okay, in summary, any gain or loss here in our notes payable and our swaps contract offset each other. So what we have left it with is our interest expense here. And where we had a variable rate that was less than the fixed rate, we had a reduction here in our interest expense. And if we had a variable rate that was greater than the fixed rate, we would have an increase here in our interest expense. So you have to accurately be able to forecast whatever uh, the change here is in your int variable interest expense. So in this case, we had to uh, accurately forecast here that we would have a reduction in our uh, variable rate in order to have a reduction here in our interest expense for this uh, notes payable and this swaps contract.